You mustn't do this. Pepper, stop. Sorry. Sorry, Mummy. I was just showing George <laughs> what not I just to do. Me. Resulting in a nice compact seizure maker for the <laughs> other sisters. Uh, kind of because apparently Pepper crack. Pig's creators never learnt anything from the Pokemon Porygon episode. <laughs> then comes oh, a truly awe-inspiring moment <laughs> in animation history. <laughs> Behold, the chicken game. game but it doesn't really involve any interaction. I'm not doing that shit today, bitch. This radically riveting piece of animation continues for the rest of the video in a desperate attempt to fill that massively overwhelming five minute time slot. <laughs> Are you sure we shouldn't have gotten <laughs> ten minutes of the chicken? Know, I'm sorry. I feel like I might have missed one of the subtle intricate messages the writers were trying to convey to the children. And then as they do, Pepper, George, Mummy and Daddy Pig all drop dead laughing. <laughs> Is roll on the floor laughter worthy? Anyway, on to the next one. And the second best pet pig episode is Halloween Party. Though it's not exactly against stiff competition, this is also among the least nauseatingly bad pet pig episodes. The kids are just having fun, and we get some interesting side chatter from the adults. I enjoy the small details of this one, like how we can see the adults covering up some of the darker elements of Halloween for the kids. Really? What's a vampire? I don't know. Oh, um, it's someone who sleeps all day. And will drink your blood. And as a mythological person, thing, the real people actually think they are. But those people are crazy people. Stays awake all night. Ooh. And I enjoyed the amount of variety and scenery we got in this episode compared to other episodes. Why in the hell was there a helicopter? Uh, you never points that out. Like, how in the hell would a small town afford a helicopter? Oh, the house is like a two-story house. Listen to this. There's some actual subtlety here in the dialogue delivery. I'm a superhero. Superheroes aren't scary. I'm a scary superhero. Fan tr fanboy and chum chum. <laughs> Get it? Oh. Basically, the story is Papa goes to the door picking up her friends before they head back to her place for a Halloween party. I'm a witch! <laughs> That's not of a witch goes. A witch kills people. A witch is a cult. They don't know what freaking actually real, real witchcraft is. I actually enjoy the different designs and costume choices. I mean, sure, they're simple, but they give kids variety. They tell them what these costumes are. They tell them about them. There's no sandbagging here. They actually fill the full five minutes of the episode with interesting stuff. I think this would actually be stimulating for a child Pepper's age. Giving them content to think about, a different event in their head, telling oh, them about sure, the characters. Sure, sure. It, it actually keeps sure them thinking. Sure thing, sure I thing. even thought the party at the end had some cute jokes. Ah, oh, a vampire. That brings back memories of the old country. That's odd. When I slayed and murdered my family and drank their blood because I was bitten because I wanted to screw a guy I liked. You know, just start my average high school days. <laughs> Madame Giselle doesn't have a reflection in the- Because she was so damn hideous, the mirror just said, go screw yourself. <laughs> mirror, I hate to say it, but you could have actually just taught the kids something, Peppa. You're still annoying, but, you know, uh, good for you for teaching them something. Oh. The full yeah, five right. minute runtime was actually used to its full advantage. I know that's not saying much, but you know, for Peppa, that's a definite improvement. And our sure, number sure, one sure, sure. abysmal Peppa Pig episode yeah, is so Spiderweb. Hello, Mr. Skibby Legs. <laughs> Unfazed by the media backlash of the last Spider episode, the creators felt that one Mr. Skibby Legs episode wasn't enough. So they thought, yeah. why not make another Mr. Skibby Legs episode? Like Clearly, it worked so well the first time we talked about it. Like, I don't get it. Is this their way? Of trolling Australia, so let's just go through a brief checklist of all the terrible things this episode teaches. Number one, leaving your office infested with spiders. Daddy Pig, <laughs> this study is a complete mess. 
Why would you teach children that these are safe, hygienic living conditions? I love cobwebs. They give the room character. No. Well, they might want something to eat, and you're a pretty good snack for them. Well, cobwebs traditionally hold redback spiders, one of the deadliest spiders on Earth. They can envenom humans within 30 minutes. Number two. Encouraging children to be close enough to spiders to French them. Particularly now that the nesting grounds of the spiders is clearly your office. And typically, spiders and snakes tend to bite when you're in their nesting grounds. Ooh. They Number want three, some supper. handling the spider oh, okay. with your bare hands. Yeah. Typically, when I'm trying to catch a spider, I use very thick garden gloves before getting it in a container and then dumping it outside. Or far more likely, <laughs> I squish it with my boots or spray it with an old mm. spray to turn my entire house into a biohazard. The episode teaches the children all about the basics of spiders and how friendly and wonderful they are, except not to touch them. And finally, teaching kids that daddy being late for work is less important than a spider's web being messed up. You said you must never, ever break Ah. Yes, Daddy Pig. If you move the car, you will break the web. But how am I going to get to work? Yeah. Oh no! Don't worry about food on the table for wow. the family. No, no, that's none of my web. damn business. Peppa Pig spider web is the number one abysmal Peppa Pig episode, wait, wait, wait. and oh, the God. number one best Peppa Pig episode is. <sighs> Install the time app today and get started. Shit. Oh, dear God. Thunderstorm. Pepper, George, did you bring all your toys in from the garden? Huh. This episode teaches yeah, kids. Mommy, I bury my well friends in the backyard. And it normalizes thunderstorms for children by showing Pepper experiencing one. I like that. If you, I'm scratching my legs. The 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 bugs are very loud. There's some basic, understandable oh, tips for kids throughout it, like showing that it's better for an adult to go out during a thunderstorm when necessary, or how to handle the ever common dripping ceiling. In fact, the final part of the episode teaches children how to count between the lightning flash and the thunder sound to figure out how far away the storm is, and whether it's getting closer or it's further away. Let's count between each flash and bang. The higher we can count, the further away the mm -hmm. thunderstorm is. Yeah, sure, sure. One, two, three. That's three. This right here is probably the most beautiful and constructive moment I've seen in Peppa Pig. There's closeness, there's understanding, and the whole family's working together. I like it. Thunderstorm tries to normalize one of the scariest events for young children. And any episode that helps okay, children yeah. understand their fears gets major brownie points. Oh, yeah. I hate to admit it, but I actually think this episode would be useful for some kids. I personally consider this the best Peppa Pig episode. The thunderstorm is over. Yay! And the Peppa Pig show is canceled. I think the show is going to be watched by millions of kids, and we're inevitably going to have to keep. Anyway, so let's end the review because, eh, why not? It